viewers. Well, I took a look at some of my other uh, YouTube videos and I realized that we've had a lot of new subscribers and I haven't been introducing myself. And I've been on other um, YouTube uh, channels and it seems to me like they go on and on and on. So I'm just going to tell you my name is Katharina Giglio for those of you that are new. And everybody calls me Kat. And I've been writing a blog since 2009. And when I'm not here on YouTube, if you miss me, you can always go to my blog. I write a new blog post every Tuesday. And I talk about my trials and tribulations and the things I'm creating in the studio. Um, so I hope you'll join me there. And today we are filming part four. Yep, four of my favorite mixed media backgrounds and the very first one didn't have a one in front of it it was just my favorite mixed media backgrounds so if you want to go back and look at all of those if this is the first one that you're that you're you know viewing uh, there are others so today we're going to be discussing four new techniques at least some of them are, were new to me and one I've been I think pioneering I googled it and I couldn't find any information so I'm, I'm hoping that you like it uh, they are, and I wrote it down so I would remember, micro bead gel, drywall tape, sheer fabrics, and plaster cloth on paper. So I'm going to put my apron on and we'll come right back. I'm starting out with mixed media paper, just plain old mixed media paper that I painted in uh, different colors. And these are the colors that I'm using. Um, burnt sienna, carbon black, Quin Acridone Nickel Azo Gold and uh, Yellow Okra. And I, I know somebody's going to ask me, so that's why I made sure to tell you because someone will want to know. Um, so I started out with these, uh, with these painted, and the reason that I painted them is because all of the products that I'm using today are all white, and I wanted them to stand out so that you could see really what I'm doing. And I put gloves on uh, to use because I'm going to be using uh, glass uh, bead gel, which is uh, a micro bead, and uh, it's a gel medium with micro beads in it. So there's a, <clears throat> it's a really cool product. I really like it. Um, I do have a caveat about it though, because it's micro bead gel. You want to make sure that if you're using a palette brush, or, I mean a palette knife or a brush, that you're not. Um, you're not soaking your water and then dumping it down the drain because the micro beads will go into your into your water um, system and they just aren't filtered out very well. So um, I, I wipe things off and then uh, wash them out. So to use this, I'm simply going to use a fairly generous amount uh, on my palette knife and then I'm going to put it down on the page and. You can do all kinds of cool things with this. You can make swirls, and it's it's really fun to to use and to play with. Um, I'm just going to follow this natural line here that's on the page, so you can see how easy it is to play with it. And uh, you can edge it with the palette knife and clean it up. The cool thing about using the palette knife is that you can make all kinds of little lines in it. You can do that with a brush too. Um, and you can smooth it out. You can make it thicker. You can put it around other things. It's just very cool. The other thing is, um, I, you know, I, I decided to use all of the pieces, all of the techniques, um, just in their raw state, but I also like to add paint to it. You could add it and, you know, put a little bit in a container and then add some paint to give it color. And, and it has just great texture. I hope you can see that. It has awesome texture. And so what I'm going to do now is I've got one that's already done. It's already dried and I'm going to paint that and just give a little bit of color to it so you can see. I don't know if you can actually see it, but it has um, kind of a sparkle to it. it. It's really kind of cool. And with iridescent paints, I think it would just be so yummy. I just, I love it. Uh, so now I want something that's gonna stand out so you can really see it. I'm going to use a little bit of Titan Buff. It's a uh, golden. 
and uh, so you can see it. So you can get an idea of the texture that comes through with it. And I hope you can see that it just has this wonderful rich texture on here. And I just think it's just really yummy, really fun. Okay, and I've got an example for you um, in my journal pages from February. I actually used it in here um, right alongside fabric, and we're going to be talking about fabrics today too. And I just love the rough texture and the smooth texture of uh, the page. It just, I think it just works really well. It's really arresting to the eye. Next one is drywall tape. This is drywall tape, and uh, if you don't hang out in hardware stores, you probably wouldn't know about it. Uh, but it's a little bit sticky, and it comes in uh, different widths and textures and all different kinds. You can cut it. Um, and what I love about it is that you can actually, you know, because you can cut it into strips, you can work on a grid. You can use uh, can use just small pieces of it uh, and then just put it down on the page and we're going to reinforce it. So working on a grid, it's really easy to use to do that. And uh, it's really fun. And just trim it up. And then what, what I like to do with it is sometimes leave it blank. I've got an example for you just to leave it blank. But also you can use molding paste to go over it. And I'm going to use my, my antique palette knife again. And I'm just going to use a little bit of molding paste and smear that on. That's a te technical art term, smearing. <laughs> just a smattering of it. And because it's molding paste and it's got wonderful plastic in it, uh, you're going to have this stuck down really nicely, beautifully. Now with molding paste, again, you know, I'm using it just as white so you can see the difference, but you can always add paint to it, take it out, put it in a, in a little container, mix the paint together with it so that you have another color. But you can still see the tape on here and it, it just it looks really cool. And you can go back and clean it up if you want, put um, collage in here, uh, and just add paint, do whatever you want to do. But it, it's a wonderful technique. This next technique is about using cloth in your work and I use fabric all the time in my work. In fact I have an example uh, for you right here. This is, uh, I mean, all the monthly, I guess, probably I use it. So this is um, muslin, and then there's also some some uh, a gauzy fabric. It's not. Uh, I don't think it's. I don't think it's cheesecloth, but some kind of gauzy fabric that I glued on here too. And um, for this technique, that we're going to be using cheesecloth, and I wanted to share with you. Uh, this spread that I did last October, and this is with cheesecloth, and I'm going to show you how I got that effect. I'm using culinary cheesecloth. It's the kind of stuff that you wrap herbs in. You can just buy, you know, buy it in any grocery store. And what I love to do is just to cut a whole, just a section off, just like this. I'm just going to put some gel medium down on my page. And then I'm going to use the cheesecloth. You have to find where it's folded. <laughs> so 
what I like to do is unfold it and then you can manipulate it and pull on the weave and it just makes this wonderful gauzy stuff and then put it down and I, I usually leave a little bit extra on the edge and then manipulate it and here again you're going to want to use gloves because it's gel medium and <clears throat> You want to have limited contact with the gel medium on your hands. Okay, so it looks like this. The cool thing about this stuff is that you can bunch it, you can make it really thick, you can make it really thin, as ethereal as you want, as thick as you want. And it just makes the most fabulous textures. You can then put and put it around your your images and I have one that's already dried so I'm going to show you what it looks like when you paint it the cool stuff the cool thing about <clears throat> excuse me the cool thing about using fabrics is that you can dye them uh, or paint them and then put them down too um, I like doing that. But the other thing I wanted to share with you about using fabrics is using sheer fabrics. This was an old scarf I had that had a bunch of holes in it and I've just been cutting that up and uh, using that uh, for things and you know so there's all different kinds of things. If you go through your old clothes and wardrobe and see what kinds of things you can actually use um, and, and they create such wonderful textures. So, just putting that down. And adding it to it. Old netting, tool, all different kinds of sheer fabric. So, think about using those because they it really they lend themselves so well to mixed media. So, here's one that's finished. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of color on here so you can see it. See how it just pops out of there? It just looks so cool. and then add whatever you want to it. The last technique I want to share with you today is using a plaster cloth in your work. And like I said, I, I researched this quite a bit and couldn't find anything, any way to stick it on paper to make it actually adhere. Um, I had all kinds of issues with it. Uh, and I think I finally figured it out. So here's an example of my uh, of using plaster cloth in work and this is my 2016-2017 journal and um, I, uh, I wrapped it around the edge and then covered it with paper on the inside so I, I have no worries about it coming apart but laying it flat on paper that was where the issue uh, came in and what happened was it would just it just kept lifting up off the paper um, as you can see here and uh, I'm just going to cut that off because I'm going to show you kind of what it looks like. So if you've never worked with plaster cloth before, then it comes in a little package like this. I just cut it open and I keep it in here. It's really messy. It lives in its own little um, paper or plastic bag uh, and um, it's going to get everything kind of yucky. So <laughs> it's going to get everything covered with uh, plaster. Uh, because it's actually cloth that um, it's uh, got little holes in it and it's impregnated with plaster. So it, it's made for using armature and old, you know, casts and things like that. Uh, the cool thing about it is, is it comes in these sheets. So you can cut it into different shapes. You can cut it into circles, squares, strips. You can do all kinds of things with it. And uh, the, the way it the way you use it is to dip it into water and that's what uh, activates it. So I'm just going to cut strips uh, and, and place it on here. Now what I learned was on paper 
you have to um, you have to sand the paper. Just putting gesso on it isn't enough. You've got to really sand it down. And so uh, I, I, you could start with a, a, a you know just a plain white piece of paper and then uh, lay it down and then do your collage work and everything around it. Or you can start with something painted, but you have to sand it. it. Has to have a good sanding, otherwise it's just not going to adhere. So I'm just going to cut a strip. Uh, the other thing I want to show you is that you can measure it by just folding it over, and then you have a pretty good guide to use to cut it. Or you can just cut it freehand, but this. This works pretty well. And then we're just going to soak it in water. Just get it wet and lay it down. And then you're going to rub it just slightly. That's going to activate the, the plaster. Cut this off. I'm going to put another piece down here. And like I said, it's pretty messy. It gets all over everything. But it's just so fun to use, I think. And it, it creates such a great texture, such a yummy, yummy, yummy texture. I know I'm using yummy over and over and again. <laughs> I can't help it because I just I'm so in love with texture. So, and then we're gonna put just a little piece on this side here, so you can see that. And then you have to wait for it to dry, obviously. And of course, you're going to have this plaster on your painted piece. So you have to come back and clean that up once it's dry. But that's easy enough to do. So we just made a little, little mark on the page just to show you what it's like. And then this one, uh, I'm just going to put a little paint on it so you can see what it looks like once you paint it. You can use as much or as little paint as you want. Lift it off. get this awesome texture going on in it. I think it's just so cool. We're at Chow for now. Hope you enjoyed this segment. Thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate your comments and your subscriptions. We really, really appreciate it. And next time we're going to be filming a studio tour. And instead of having a really clean studio to show off, I'm going to show you all of my projects, my works in progress, and uh, I'll show you what I'm working on. So I hope you join us then. And until then, ciao, ciao.